Hello, this is Evan Tucker at OSCon 2019 in Portland, and I'm here with Aaron Aldrich from La uh, Elasticsearch. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing well, thanks. Thanks for dropping by. Yeah, um, no tell us a little bit about uh, you know Elasticsearch and what you guys are showcasing at the conference. Yeah, so uh, Elastic is the company that is behind Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, and Beats. Those are our primary open source projects. Um, Elasticsearch started as an open source project back in the day. It was, you know, our founders, one person, a repo on GitHub and an IRC channel is how Elasticsearch started. And now, uh, you know, we're lucky enough to be a public company. So uh, we come to OzCon because open source is something that's dear to how we develop software. It's it's part of the community that we grew up in uh, and, you know, continue to show awareness for what cool new stuff we're doing. That's great. And so tell, uh, tell our audience a little bit about what Elastic uh, and Elasticsearch provides. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, at its core, Elasticsearch is for, you know, search. Uh, so a lot of companies use this just for that. So it's powering search engines for like Wikipedia, for instance, is using Elasticsearch uh, behind the scenes to do all their searching. Um, it also has been used for a lot of data analytics. So my, my favorite customer to talk about is uh, NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, who until it stopped responding, the Mars rover was sending all of its telemetry data into the Elastic Stack at uh, NASA to do all the analysis on the data uh, as quickly as possible. To, you know, it, it takes 20 minutes to get data to Mars, so they have to make decisions you know, fast enough that they don't fall off a cliff. Um, so it's been used for... General data analysis, a lot of folks ship uh, system data into it, so they're using it, the classic ELK stack for log aggregation. Uh, some folks are sending you know, system metrics or distributed tracing into our APM products, uh, and they get you know, one platform with a common schema that they can search and analyze and compare data across their systems. So it's kind of anywhere you can put data in and want to get some meaning out, Elastic tends to show up somewhere and help people out. Awesome. What are some? Uh, what are some? Uh, I like the Mars use case. Uh, what are, yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a, a little bit about some other common use cases? Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of what are the the best ones to talk about. Uh, Uber actually is powered by Elasticsearch, so a lot of their backend like pairing of drivers to riders is it's a search problem, right? You're trying to find someone who can drive you to a place, and they're trying to find someone going where they're going. Um, so it's. Really interesting that it's always search somewhere in the back end, but what are you searching for? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of another good use case uh, that we have. The University of Indiana is actually using it for a security platform. So they're collecting all their security metrics for whether it's system audit logs or, um, you know, like Zeek logs that might be collected in the security community, and they've built a whole uh, sim out of the Elasticsearch platform. So again, they're searching for some intruder or anomalous behavior in their system somewhere, and they chose Elasticsearch for that. So. Oh, that's really yeah. fascinating, actually. Uh, all of those use cases are. Um, so uh, how does uh, how does Elasticsearch uh, integrate with production systems? Are you guys a uh, self-hosted solution, or are you available in a SaaS offering as well? Or <laughs> The short answer is yes. Um, so it started out as the very classic, you know, downloadable package, installable binaries, that sort of thing. Um, so you can host it inside of your own infrastructure. You want to set up however you want, download the binaries and run them yourself. Uh, we also have a cloud-hosted solution, Elasticsearch Service, which is exactly as if you were running Elasticsearch, but in a cloud, we manage all the infrastructure in the back end. Um, we have a couple uh, more specifically SaaS products rolling out. So there is just site search, which is like, I want to add a search bar to my website. You can do that without having to have deep Elasticsearch knowledge now by rolling out the site search. Uh, and similarly with App Search, if you're building some sort of application and need a search bar, App Search kind of answers that question. Um, and the yeah, so cloud lives in whether you want to deploy on AWS or Google Cloud. Um, we've got partnerships with Azure as well, um, so you can deploy to any cloud that you want to. Uh, what I find actually fascinating is that even our cloud product. So if you're say an enterprise that can't deploy to a public cloud, we have a cloud enterprise solution, which is literally how we manage and run our cloud product that you can install in your own data centers and uh, host effectively Elasticsearch as a service internally. Wow, that's, that's great. Um, so do you guys uh, support multi-language and uh, very good data sets, I guess? Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, multi-language, whether you're talking about programming language or actual language searching, uh, we support multiple languages. That's great. Um, so we have a number of different you know, programming language clients that can interface uh, with Elasticsearch more directly. They you know, deal with the API interaction a little bit better for that specific language. 
Um, and because we're doing search and doing text processing, we have a number of different analyzers for uh, different spoken languages. So I know like six months ago, we rolled out a new Korean language analyzer, for instance, that deals with Korean language better than you know, just trying to guess where to split up words. Great. What about a uh, non-spoken language, like uh, data sets that are um, maybe like a genetic string or that type of thing? Yeah. So I um, I don't know about a genetic string specifically. I know uh, Yale has done a lot of cancer research using Elastic to do some of the data analysis. Um, so I'm sure there's some genetic data involved in that that I just don't know the specifics yeah. of. Um, but effectively, it's all uh, JSON documents. So as long as you can get a key value pairing out of it, and you can kind of convince, tell Elastic what that data might be, whether it's a, a keyword string or if it should do some text analysis on it, um, or are they numbers so it knows what you want to do with those fields, um, then you can store just about anything. Awesome. Yeah, uh, that's powerful and flexible. Um, yeah, yeah. Great. And uh, Elasticsearch has been around for quite a while. Um, yes. What are some of the latest uh, developments uh, and enhancements that you guys are uh, show, uh, you know, bring, bringing to market? Yeah. Um, so our Elasticsearch itself, like the core features that are starting to build out now are supports for more than one type of index. Uh, so our index lifecycle management has been really big for if you want to move data between uh, your hot nodes, like where you're searching all the time, so you probably want access to you know really fast storage, lots of memory, so it can do quick searching. Um, but as you have, you know, say three, four year old data that you don't really search all that often, you can move that to uh, you know more storage cheap indices, uh, and then lifecycle management handles all that automatically, so you're not having to run outside scripts or run processes manually throughout all of that. Um, so a lot has been done in Elasticsearch to try and adapt to what our customers need from storage perspective. That's sort of the challenge when you're like doing lots of search. Um, uh, all of our products have done lots of interesting things. I'm trying to think of what else is is great. Uh, one of my favorite features in Kibana recently has been the uh, the Canvas feature, which is rolled out. Um, I want to say earlier this year that it came out in general availability. And it's kind of like a, uh, what if I wanted to make a presentation but use actual live data behind it? And so Kibana can make lots of, it already makes pretty pictures and graphs and things like that. But this one's like, you can do some real graphic design in it and import that image and lay mark, uh, text markdown languages on top of it or your own custom graphs or whatever else, you know, infographic type stuff. That kind of like, we need to present our data to C-suite and have them be compelled. Canvas is, is the way to do that, so. Awesome. That's really cool. Well, hey, I look look forward to uh, hearing great news from you guys going, going forward as well. And yeah. uh, thanks for joining us here. And uh, again, I'm here with Aaron Aldrich of Elastic and Elasticsearch. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You can have the same issue here. But um, I was going to say, uh, yeah, so you're, uh, how long have you been over there? Uh, so I've been with Elastic uh, a little over a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And how do you, I, I like to develop developer advocate uh, role? Uh, it's great. It is uh, something I'm still learning to balance all the travel with being home, but uh, I really enjoy it. I enjoy the human aspect of all the technology. I mean, that's what I'm drawn to open source is the mm -hmm. communities that get created around it. And um, so I really enjoy the fact I get to meet new people, talk about Elastic, talk about whatever else they're doing. Uh, I really enjoy finding out new use cases and talking yeah. to folks that are like, oh yeah, we... Uh, I actually met someone here who was like, yeah, for my high school project, I built a little solar panel and like fed the data into Elasticsearch so we could do like experimentation on, you know, what happens during the day. Like we can watch it go up and it dips at this time every day. Like it turns out there's a flagpole that covers the solar panel. It was like, really interesting. Uh, using it for like an educational purposes and like yeah. science and research and that sort of thing. So wow. yeah, I really enjoy it. Yeah, I think it's interesting that Elasticsearch can support um, not just, say, free text search, but actual you know, trace through data. Yeah, it, it really is limited only by what you want to put in it, right? Like anything you can think of, yeah, try it out. It'll probably work, and you can probably do some analysis on it. Yeah. You guys yeah. Uh, recently added some like new UI niceness to the product to enable some usability. 
Yeah, that's, I probably should have <laughs> mentioned that on the podcast too. It's still recording. Uh, oh, perfect. Turn it off. There so. we go. <laughs> um, back. Yeah, we've done a lot of facelifting in uh, Kibana. Kibana mm-hmm. was very much just sort of the visual front end for everything, uh, and now has very much become the UI for the entire stack. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of management is done through Kibana now. It's mm-hmm. becoming middleware for a lot of the communication to one another. We're adding like um, central pipeline management into Kibana. You know, central beats configuration management. So a Kibana lot of quality like of life a, being added to it. It's like a what's a what's another common product that uh, you guys can. Uh, so Grafana, yeah. which sounds almost like I can say, right, right. Uh, which was actually a fork of an earlier version of Kibana, and was then it? they've both done their own thing. Um, yeah, so okay. Grafana has done very much the visualization engine. It's right. really good at that, yeah. uh, especially with time series data and yeah. things like that. Right. Um, Kibana is becoming very much like the way to operate uh, the stack rather than having to dig into it all the time. Okay. Uh, you can like actually go through the UI. Right. Um, includes a lot of quality of life things like yeah. actual stock man- monitoring and like how is my cluster doing and you can check there so yeah has it been is it is it has it become easier to um, configure and manage elasticsearch uh, over the last 5 10 years yeah definitely okay. um, some of it's been defaults that we've changed to something more sane than what made sense at the time yeah um, there's been uh, a lot of a lot of push towards safer defaults so mm-hmm. for instance um, that's good Originally, every index would, would be five shards, whatever index you created. But if you have someone spinning up two or three different beats, by default, they're cycling every day and creating a new index that's five shards. You end up with w- way too many small shards on your like test cluster trying to figure out if it works. And then nothing does because it's trying. you just have all this memory overhead just running you know, hundreds of shards after a few months. Uh, so we've done things like default down to one, like default the cycle on like a week or something like that. So, you know, it's fixing a lot of the common problems that we have with managing it. Hey, uh, come on in whenever you're ready. Um, yeah. And, uh, saying, saying defaults are definitely a, a good, yeah. uh, and then moving more control into graphical UI instead of having to know all the API hooks and everything. Like right. That. Um, and then your work on the, the podcast, uh, how's that going? Uh, it's going pretty well, actually. The, uh, the biggest challenge is... Uh, making sure I have enough uh, time to edit things when I'm traveling. But uh, other than right. that, it's going pretty well. Yeah, all right. Uh, how long have you been doing it? Uh, how long have we been doing it? I want to say um, just under a year that we started. Maybe it's about that much time now. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been the most consistent getting episodes out, but they are decent content, and it's kind of everything vaguely related to Elastic. So I just... Um, We've done some interviews with uh, Mary Thingvall and John O'Bacon, who are often at OSCON talking about community. Um, we've done some other interviews with internal Elastic folks talking about new features that we have coming out. And uh, just recently interviewed with um, Molly Struvy, who uh, just recently put out like a dev.to uh, blog article about how they improved their on-call cycle and put their devs on call and made it not horrible. So yeah, it's been That's cool. a mix of content, all vaguely related to Elastic. I just piloted a, the first uh, show, a uh, new show for, on blockchain. Uh, oh, nice. Last week. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's been fun. Has there been a lot of blockchain interest? Uh, well, I mean, there's that's kind of the issue is that there just is not the adoption is in there. Yeah. It, trying to get the word out using, you know. YouTube live streams out of Silicon Valley. Sure, right, it's probably yeah. not the best way to approach the adoption <laughs> issue. Um, and so, you know, we were we were just taking an old school FM across the Midwest. Oh, nice. Stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's fun. It's, it's new for me. So yeah, I'm that's cool. A developer who's just, you know, fumbling into. <laughs> other, do you, how do you end places. up getting FM broadcast? Is it? Uh, yeah, I guess that there's folks out there who still know how to score the the, the, the time. Okay, cool. Um, Blur Group, you know, we do this. A lot of this stuff ends up in um, DM Radio and uh, Inside Analysis. And so, uh, you know, if uh, you know, if you ever want to, you know, jump on with us, then uh, we'd be yeah, happy cool. to host you. And um, either on the well, probably on the data side. <laughs> I'm, uh, unless you want, unless you want to gab about blockchain, and help me explain it to the, the norm, <laughs> to the normies. But uh, um, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's it's good. Connect, we should connect. Uh, yeah, for sure. Pick your, pick your brain on some stuff. Um, yeah, let me see. I probably have. Do I have a card left? I do. 
There you go. Awesome, man. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, we'll definitely connect about it and, and see what's going on with that. I love it, community builder. Yeah. It's all about the people, man. It, it really is. It really is. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah. That was great. Take care.